we discuss it. It doesn't reflect the general state of the internet developments, which are, uh, at least when it comes to discussions, quite dynamic, uh, quite busy, and quite intensive. And uh, welcome to our November briefing, where uh, monthly briefing, where we are going to summarize the major developments during the previous month, as our usual practice to meet every last Tuesday in the month and to uh, reflect on the major developments during the previous uh, previous uh, few weeks. Now, we are in the middle of the very busy digital autumn. Uh, as you know, uh, there are uh, quite a few activities ahead of the Internet Governance Forum. I know that most of you are uh, quite busy and involved in different meetings related to digital issues from cybersecurity to human rights, uh, blockchain, artificial intelligence, internet governance, you name it and you have it. Now, uh, the main purpose of uh, today's discussion will be to uh, review, uh, in addition to re of reviewing the latest developments, also to indicate where we are with developments toward the IGF, Internet Governance Forum, as you know, will be held in Geneva between 18th and 21st of December, and it will be, in a way, the uh, final event of this uh, very busy year in the uh, digital field. The plan for today, in addition to our internet uh, monthly briefing, today we will have also a session focusing to access to justice in digital issues. There is a major question that citizens, organizations, institutions do not have uh, possibilities to protect their legal rights uh, uh, in digital matters. That we will be discussing today, started, uh, started, uh, starting at 3 o'clock, with a few experts, the ways and means that could be used in, traditional, in addition to traditional courts in order to protect uh, rights uh, online and uh, rights offline, which are increasingly mediated by the Internet. This is the plan for today. Therefore, we start now with the monthly briefing. At 3 o'clock, those of you who can uh, stand, uh, who can stay here, can join G uh, Digital Geneva talks, focusing on the, the re exact question is where and how to protect legal interests in the digital era. Therefore, we'll have one hour and a half to m do the mapping of the various developments in this field. Now, we'll start with the monthly briefing. Arvin, please, if you can zoom uh, to the main screen, Davide, please. Yep. Now, this is the list of the major events that we had uh, in, uh, in, uh, in this month. You can see that it was a very, very, very busy month. There were events related to Geneva Peace Week. Uh, we had a major event with Brad Smith uh, focusing on uh, uh, Geneva Digital Convention. Uh, there was a web summit. I won't be going through the list of these events. Only the last few days we had the Global Conference on Cyberspace in New Delhi, uh, and uh, right now, we have a sixth United Nations Forum on Business and Human Rights, where apparently I heard that uh, the question of digital and human rights is uh, focusing uh, high on the agenda. Therefore, digital is all over the place. This is an important issue in, uh, which is starting to dominate discussion also in the traditional issue areas, like human rights, uh, trade, uh, health, and other fields. Therefore, please, you can review the, the major events. We'll be mentioning them while we are going to through answering the question, what happened in November. Next, please. OK, next. First, you can find on the table barometer, a barometer where we try to follow the pressure in the, in the different uh, fields. As you can see, there is increasing pr pressure when it come, comes to the global IG architecture. Uh, especially with discussion what can be done after the failure of the UNGG to produce the report last year, uh, this year, uh, earlier this year. Therefore, there is a discussion where one can discuss uh, cyber is issues and cyber norms. But we'll reflect it as one of the selected trends. Sustainable development, sustainable development, according to an, our analysis, featured equally during uh, there were not any major major developments security has been uh, the importance of security has been ri ri uh, uh, rising uh, since the beginning of the, of the year and here we have increasing pressure with the uh, more and more ddos uh, denial of services attacks with the importance of internet of things uh, now the security vulnerability at of uh, in uh, ethereum the one of the uh, uh, virtual money uh, uh, systems with, five, uh, with 500 uh, thousand units 
of the ether cryptocurrency being compromised by 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 the hacking by external actors next next Arvin. e-commerce uh, in particular in geneva has been also a quite uh, quite in the focus of the policy makers we have the ongoing discussion in the preparation for the wto ministerial meeting and we will reflect later on on the current situation but also uh, digital coming into the regional and bilateral discussion. There is a feeling that uh, WTO may not bring the major breakthrough when it comes to the e-commerce. Uh, various players are focusing more and more on bilateral and regional instruments to continue developing uh, e-commerce e e rules. When it comes to uh, digital rights, uh, there, was the, there were quite a few, few leaks, leaks of data of 57 million users uh, by Uber, and we'll later on focus on it. Venezuelan Constitutional Assembly has passed a law. Uh, its uh, authorities say uh, would punish messages of hate in broadcast and social media with penalties reaching 20 years in prison. Therefore, there is a general trend towards increasing pressure uh, when it comes to the, in particular, freedom of expression and uh, core, uh, core human rights. And uh, this is one of the developments, and we'll reflect later on on it. Next. In the field of uh, juridical and legal issues, that has been a clear trend. And this is the reason why we decided to schedule digital talk sessions this afternoon on juri uh, juridic uh, juridical issues. There is a constant pressure from citizens and organizations to use traditional and new ways to, uh, to access to justice in online online field. As you know, there is a California judge who blocked the Canadian Supreme Court's uh, decision uh, ruling on the right to be for, uh, forgotten from taking effects in the United States. There is also the uh, pending uh, the uh, judgment on the status of Uber by European Court of Justice. On infrastructure, we had more or less the say, uh, the, we, we didn't have any major breakthroughs. There is a question of a new law, new law which uh, uh, bans the use of virtual private network, networks, VPNs in Russia, which came into force on the 1st of November. And we are now waiting to see how it is going to be implemented and how it is going to affect uh, users in, uh, in Russia. As you know, Russia and China decided to ban or uh, to uh, restrict uh, use of the VPNs. VPNs are virtual private networks which have been used for the full access to the internet, especially bypassing any, any sort of restriction which, uh, which, uh, which exists uh, on the country level. I'm sure that you're following the question of net neutrality. Um, it is very, very, uh, there is a very heated debate. Uh, obviously, whatever is happening in the United States affects the Internet globally. And as you can, uh, as uh, you, you may, uh, may uh, follow and heard that there is a, a strong push towards the revision of the 2015 net neutrality rules and return uh, to some sort of uh, 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 banning of net neutrality and uh, essentially uh, in, um, if I can simplify it, uh, moving the internet to in the situation where the packets and internet traffic won't have the same status. Therefore, we'll have uh, VIP internet and we'll have a different type of uh, diversification of the use of the internet, more secure, less secure the internet. It is very likely that this ruling, uh, on the, which is scheduled for the 14th of December by uh, US uh, Federal Communication Commission, will substantively change the way how it how internet uh, is used and developed further especially for with this uh, major di uh, diversification now the last point the last uh, trend which we have been following carefully is related to new technologies internet of things artificial intelligence blockchain big data and we will reflect on it on the in the major major trends as you know there is very uh, sort of a polarized debate on the impact of internet, uh, artificial intelligence on modern society, with on one hand uh, uh, those who argue, like Elon Musk, that it is one of the major threats for humanity, next to the nuclear weapons and uh, climate change, and those who argue basically that society will find a way to deal with the negative uh, uh, impact of uh, artificial intelligence, and as human humanity has been doing throughout the history, 
it will find ways and means to deal with negative aspects and benefit from the positive aspects of the artificial intelligence development. This is the question of the impact of artificial intelligence, especially in the link to big data and Internet of Things, is going to remain the major issue in the policy debates. It is currently on more or less conceptual philosophical level, but it will be moving closer to the policy spaces. And we had a, a negotiation and the first discussion of the group of government experts on lethal autonomous weapon systems, which, uh, which happened uh, uh, during this month, and we'll reflect it on, on it in the in discussion on five major trends. Next. OK, as uh, now you have all of these developments, many events. You're following them on daily basis. Uh, and what we try to do is to highlight five major trends that, in our view, uh, mark the, the previous month, and it will influence the uh, uh, forthcoming developments in digital field. Next. The first trend is a search for cyber norms. I guess that most of you attended Brad Smith uh, talk at the, at the UN, and the Salman is today with us uh, here. Salman Bal from the, you know, who, who uh, uh, participated in the in organization of this interesting uh, talk, uh, where uh, Brad Smith basically delivered his presentation on the uh, question on the on the need for the uh, development and the introduction of the Digital Geneva Convention. As you know, it is a very controversial proposal, and there are many actors who argue that, uh, first of all, there is no need to have a convention in this field, and there are uh, existing uh, fora and uh, places where the digital issue can be addressed, as it happened, for example, with the government group of experts of autonomous weapons. Microsoft uh, uh, has been proposing this uh, for various reasons. One of the reasons is that Microsoft is the most exposed company for the for cyber cybersecurity attacks, and uh, it it is on the front line on uh, many developments, including WannaCry, ransomware, and uh, and the, the the other uh, the other developments. Now, his uh, uh, Brad Smith speech and the panel discussion definitely put this issue on the broader, would, I would say, uh, track two or uh, track three uh, uh, agenda in Geneva. It is not part of the negotiation. It's not part of the, of the core discussion. But more and more diplomats, uh, policymakers, academics are reflecting on, uh, on this issue with, uh, with quite opposing views. And that could be one topic that we may discuss uh, today with the participants here in our online uh, audience. In addition to these high politics uh, discussions that uh, uh, that we had with the introduction of, for example, Digital Geneva Convention, at Geneva Internet pl Platform, we are trying to focus on uh, technical issues because we noticed that uh, there are quite a few technical solutions that can address cybersecurity problems. And while in the past cyber issues were covered mainly by technical people, cyber people, we have now opposite trend of uh, having a high politicization of the discussion on cybersecurity. And obviously, this issue is of utmost importance for, uh, for global geostrategy, for national security, for a position of countries. But we try to argue that there are technical solutions that could address some of the cybersecurity issues. And it was the basic theme of the second Geneva Digital Talks, where we invited the technical experts to provide concrete technical solutions for cybersecurity issues. It will be underlying thread of uh, our focus on cybersecurity. We'll have on the 1st of November workshop here on uh, demystifying cybersecurity. We want really to come to the point what it is all about. And then we can discuss political, legal, and other aspects. This is, we can discuss also here if it is also your feeling that uh, this issue is highly politicized. Uh, among other things, because of the media coverage, because media coverage focuses on threats, on uh, cybersecurity risks. Then the end of the month, uh, last week, marked the Global Cybersecurity Conference in uh, New Delhi, which was a part of the series of events which started in London, followed by Budapest, if I'm uh, correct, Peter. Then there was a Seoul, and there was the Hague meeting. And this was the fifth one, and you were in a... In a in uh, New Delhi, you may reflect on what's happened over, over there. 
what we what we heard from our colleagues who were at the, this meeting was that obviously there are divisions when it comes to uh, next steps in the cybersecurity field, but underlying theme, underlying question in Delhi and all discussion is what are we going to do now when we don't do not have UNGG, UN uh, government group of experts as a place where countries can get together in order to discuss cybersecurity issues. One of the, therefore there is a gap. One of the ways how to fill the gap was the Global Commission on Stability of Cyber uh, uh, Space, which issued call to protect the public core of the internet. This is the, if you have been following these developments, this uh, uh, focus on the protecting the public core of the internet has been Dutch uh, initiative for the last three or four years. The major question is how to protect DNS system, how to prote protect the core infrastructure. There was discussion in Delhi how far one can go with the question of the, of the public uh, core of the internet and it was very heated debate. Is it uh, also related, for example, to financial system or is it uh, related to the, to the uh, support system for elections? Or is it, it, should be just, it should be just focused on the question of DNS and the way how the internet functions. But they, they issued a public call for the, for the protection of the, uh, uh, to protect the public core of the internet. These are more or less the major developments and they're related to uh, this, to filling the gap, which was open with the uh, failure of the UNGG to produce the report. To, nowadays, we do not have any for on the global level with the relatively universal participation or the UNGG had a limited uh, participation which is addressing directly cyber security issues in comprehensive way. We have different places like a uh, government group of experts which uh, address uh, lethal autonomous weapons but there is no place which is addressing cyber security issues in the in the comprehensive comprehensive way now i may open just for uh, for uh, first questions and the comments here and before we move to, to the new, uh, to the next uh, next trend uh, peter any any reflections from delhi what has happened or could you uh, just to reflect on the last uh, uh, couple of sentences you you, you said uh, it's true, uh, the last GGE uh, wasn't a success story. Uh, however, in New Delhi, uh, almost all governmental participants expressed the wish to continue. And they, they tried to be very positive about the outcome in, in 2013, 2015. And this is kind of regarded as an intermezzo and probably it is going to be uh, continued. China expresses its wish to 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 be uh, <laughs> to discuss these issues within the UN system. I think India as well expresses its wish. Uh, I'm not sure about Russia, but probably they did as well. So I, I haven't heard anything which which was contrary to this wish. So I think it is going to be continued in some way. Uh, and uh, naturally, the, the conference itself was a huge event. It was much bigger than the previous ones. There were about 3,000 participants and discussing four tracks, cyber for growth, cyber for security, cyber for inclusion, and cyber for diplomacy. So you might have been interested in that. So. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Well, basically, we can consider the current situation as the pause in the in the activities UNGG and most likely continuation uh, next year. Any other comments on cyber cyber norms? No. Okay. Do we have any question from? Great. Next trend is uh, now the the most focused uh, uh, issue: the debate on autonomous weapons. It, continues, you know that, that there was a call by Elon Musk and 100 uh, artificial intelligence scientists and specialists who called the UN to basically the ban of, uh, to ban uh, use of autonomous weapons systems. And there was almost like a coincidence that the UN reacted uh, not because of this call, but it, it planned this event in, in advance and there was last week the the meeting of the no week before there was a meeting of the UN uh, the, the, of the government group of experts 
which basically gathered the uh, uh, experts from the security field, uh, those who were focusing on ethics, technology, law, in order to reflect on the ways how to regulate or what to do with the uh, autonomous weapons uh, systems. Barbara attended uh, this this meeting. Barbara, would you like to tell us a few words? Uh, what was uh, your main impression from the meeting? You, you're drafting now the blog post, which will be published soon. Um, yes, uh, at Diplo Foundation, we are going to publish um, a policy brief on this issue. It was a very, very interesting topic um, because it, it touched on military, legal, ethic, uh, moral challenges. Um, so it, it was a mix of, of philosophy and uh, and concrete military strategy, which is, was a bit uh, challenging sometimes. Um, there was a lot of di disagreement about the definition and the scope of the definition of lethal autonomous weapon systems. Uh, for example, what is lethal? Uh, should there be what if a non-lethal weapon is used uh, to to kill? Um, the definition of autonomous: what is the kind of human intervention that is acceptable? Um, and uh, there were many other aspects related to this, and especially of the role of the human and human agency. Um, there was an outcome document that um, uh, that was agreed on um, that uh, that uh, agreed to meet again. The, the GGE agreed to meet again in 2018 uh, for for 10 days. Um, they also agreed that international humanitarian law continues to apply to lethal autonomous weapons system, and that states remain the responsible agents when they use and deploy lethal autonomous weapons in armed conflict. Um, but apart from that, there is a lot of uh, discussion that is still needed for any agreement on this matter. Well, then the question of regulating the robot killers will uh, take some time. But we had the last, uh, last month uh, inauguration of the uh, um, first um, uh, citizenship, robot citizenship by Saudi Arabia. Sophie became um, a sort of a robot citizen of the, of the Saudi Arabia. Therefore, this question of, uh, of uh, independence of the um, uh, human action, our uh, discretion to act in competition with artificial intelligence and robots will be on the, definitely will be coming more and more often on the agenda of the UN and different policy processes. As you can see quite on a few other issues, you have the first phase where issues are discussed uh, um, well, among philosophers, uh, among people who are reflecting on ethics, on the broader issues, and then they trickle down uh, later on to the policy processes. And uh, this discussion on the autonomous weapons system is this bridge between, let's say, academic, uh, philosophical spaces toward the, uh, towards, the, towards the UN. Obviously, uh, we couldn't expect uh, any sort of uh, agreement during this first uh, discussion, but it is, the, it is the initiation of the process, and we'll be finding, I guess, more and more discussions of this type when it comes to the human rights, when it comes to the economic aspect of artificial intelligence and use of big data. Therefore, that, that interplay between artificial intelligence and human agency which is currently discussed on the philosophical level, will be coming more and more frequently into, into policy processes. Do we have any comment or question on this point? Thank you. Christina, Tiziana, you were at the meeting, yes. Part of it, thank you. Um, I, I would just like to make a, a small nuance here because we call this a GG on lethal autonomous weapons, and we refer to our GG cyber. But the two processes are extremely different. This GG on, the, on laws has the advantage of being an open process. All member states are allowed to participate. The, it, they invite external speakers from civil society, from academia, whereas the cyber GG has always, always been a closed process, restricted at first to 15 states only. And now it's up to the last GG was 25 states. But it wasn't exactly a, an open and inclusive process. Um, so when we talk about GGs, I think it's important to make that difference because you know they don't they will not yield the same kind of results. Um, so I just wanted to make that that small remark. This is extremely, as always, extremely important intervention. Thank you for this point because there is a confusion. There is UNGG, UN United Nations Government Group of Experts, which was established by General Assembly and which reports to the first committee. And uh, as uh, Christiane indicated, which has very specific modus operandi. 
uh, many meetings are behind the closed door. And this government group of experts was established in the context of convention uh, of uh, conventional weapons, CC, CCW. Therefore, it is uh, it is completely different in in it, uh, its way how it, how it operates. Therefore, keep in mind that we have to be more specific than when we are making reference to to GG because we'll have these two processes. Especially if, as Peter indicated, we can expect uh, 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 the, the continuation of activities of UNGG. Next, please. Okay, R related to security is a question of the uh, disclosure of uh, vulnerability and uh, leaks. And the biggest surprise uh, for cyber community was, uh, was the news that Uber failed to disclose data leak uh, of uh, millions of their drivers and users. They basically entered into negotiation with cyber criminals, paid 100,000 uh, US dollars, and asked them to be quiet. And uh, uh, what uh, we know informally in the digital community is that many actors, in particular banks and actors which, uh, uh, have, uh, which depend heavily on their reputation, enter very often into uh, deals with uh, cyber criminals and uh, pay different type of ransoms in order for them to be, to be quiet. This is going to be the major issue because then as we know from the logic of dealing with a terrorist, and uh, there is uh, there is a, a risk that it can basically uh, promote the business model in inverted commas of the cyber criminals. If they can get the uh, money as they got from Uber, then they can they can uh, uh, push with their uh, their activities ransomware and uh, different uh, different uh, attacks. White House is uh, is now trying to deal with this question of uh, disclosure into more uh, organized way. They release the new vulnerability equity process by which government decides which vulnerability it will disclose. Approximately 90% of vulnerabilities are disclosed and 10% are non-disclosed and they raise the concern. And uh, those non-disclosed uh, are probably really related to national security and to other, other related issues. Now, for those of you who are following closely cybersecurity, the question of disclosure of cyber attacks and the information about cyber attacks is becoming increasingly important. And it is also part of the Microsoft Digital Geneva Convention uh, proposal how to establish ways and means to share uh, information about attacks with some sort of anonymization process that a bank can report to some independent authority that there was attack and then government authorities and companies can try to, to, to see who is behind this attack without disclosing the, the name of the company or whoever was attacked. Therefore, we have very delicate interplay between reputation, preserving reputation, and disclosing information. Next one. Well, any question on this point, comment? No. Good. Well, this has been, a, I thought of removing this trend because it is, for those of you who have been following our uh, briefings, it is real and clear trend. Courts are uh, basically becoming, uh, in a way, internet governance players. They're shaping the rules and norms. And uh, this process has, uh, has, uh, has been continuing in November. Uh, there is a question of, uh, in November, there is interesting uh, question of a US judge blocking right to be delisted decision by Supreme Court from being ap applicable in the United States. Uh, Canadian Supreme Court basically tried to apply uh, their decision to the activities which are across the border. And this is another question of extension of national laws uh, beyond the national borders. This issue has been, has been emerging uh, 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 very, very, very high on the policy agenda. And uh, there are different uh, rules. Judgment can lead to conflicting uh, rulings. And uh, there is also the, in this question, uh, there was also discussion of applicability of search warrants over data held overseas. You know that there is a Microsoft case. Microsoft has been winning so far the court, uh, court rulings about the request of the US government to have access to Microsoft data held in Ireland. This is now. But this, this, is not, this is not over, and it will be an important decision. There is uh, also the Uber, uh, uh, overall Uber court uh, uh, saga. 
in front of the European Court of Justice. We are waiting for a decision if the Uber is transportation of the information company with a quite considerable impact for the future of the Uber business model. But there are also, uh, there is now the new core process in the, in the UK where basically Uber uh, challenged this decision of the London authorities, uh, which are related basically to the question if Uber drivers are employees or contractors. This is the ultimate question, and it, it can change substantively Uber business model. Next one. Well, uh, questions, comments on this point? No, we don't have it. Good. And uh, now getting uh, back closer to, to uh, home, the Geneva Internet Platform. Uh, as you know, just uh, 200 meters from, from us is the WTO, uh, World Trade Organization. WTO is preparing from Buenos Aires ministerial meeting. In the WTO modus operandi, ministerial meetings are extremely important for setting the agenda for the next, next two years. Next ministerial meeting was supposed to be digital cyber E, whatever you call it, meeting. But uh, according to the news that we are getting uh, from the negotiation, it seems that uh, there won't be definitely uh, consensus on the way how to proceed with the uh, with the coverage of uh, e-commerce e -commerce rules with more or less division between uh, some developing countries, majority of African countries, but not only African countries, India and other countries arguing that it is too early to introduce new negotiating mandate on e-commerce in WTO, which is requested by European Union, United States and mainly OECD countries. OECD countries argue that e-commerce is becoming so important for the global economy that there is a need to introduce new rules in the, into, into the WTO context. The other group, mainly African countries plus India and few other countries, are arguing that first they are not prepared to benefit fully from the, from the, from the new rules. They need more capacity development economic and the other capacity development. And second, they want uh, WTO to focus on the completion of the Doha agenda. They think that uh, refocusing of WTO activities on e-commerce could confuse these two, two agendas. Uh, as you know, there have been quite a few negotiation and uh, attempts to, to reach the compromise, but uh, it is very, very unlikely, except if uh, some miracle happens that we'll have a compromise in uh, Buenos Aires. Therefore, the old uh, context, uh, 90, uh, 98, 1998, work program which currently is the basis, formal basis for the WTO negotiation will remain in the place. Uh, we will have a quite, uh, um, I would say, heaty debate uh, next year if we don't have a breakthrough in Buenos Aires and this issue will be emerging more and more on policy agenda because of the development of e-commerce. Regional organization will be trying to fill this gap uh, as well and there will be more and more regional in initiatives. We, those are five major trends. Um, Roxana, do we have any question from online audience? Could you? Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have started a debate here around um, the um, reform of the UNGG for cybersecurity. Okay. And we're discussing uh, whether the GG laws could be a model for inclusivity and how to take this forward the cybersecurity agenda. And we had a question from Mamadou who is asking, how do you see the future of internet governance with uh, current DDoS attacks when uh, they will be connected to artificial intelligence issues and Internet of Things? This will be very challenging in his opinion. So DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service Attacks, and the question is how would this uh, affect the future of IG when it is automatically operated via artificial intelligence? Okay. Well, we are, uh, generally speaking, uh, I think we live in the, in the very interesting phase uh, because uh, our old debates, which have been participating in for the last 15 years, at least myself, in Internet Governance versus, uh, WSIS, World Summit on Information Society context, are uh, basically facing a new reality. New reality, especially when it comes to development of arti artificial intelligence, uh, big data, Internet of Things. And uh, 
there are now more and more calls uh, from uh, beyond the traditional dichotomy. As you know, in traditional dichotomy, though there, there were those who argued for the internet, uh, international internet convention or legal instrument on the global level, and those who were arg who argued with uh, different arguments that uh, there is no need for the for the for the global agreement in 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 this field. The field is getting really confused with Microsoft, for example, proposing a Geneva uh, Digital Convention, with uh, Elon Musk uh, and uh, some entrepreneurs arguing for the more uh, regulation in this field. Now, what we can uh, expect on DDoS attack, on artificial intelligence, is uh, really um, a reshaping of the global digital space around completely different issues, uh, around completely new challenges, and uh, some challenges will be definitely related to artificial intelligence and how to ensure that we don't move beyond the uh, point of no return where we can be have definitely final say when it comes to development of artificial intelligence when it comes to the autonomous weapons that we already discussed uh, driverless cars uh, use of artificial intelligence uh, in uh, many devices that are around us special internet assistance, Alexa, and other tools. Therefore, that debate is going to be quite, uh, this is, let's say, my crystal ball exercise, will be quite different. Now, I suggest that you consult the, the latest publication by The Economist, uh, their prediction for 2018. And there were two, basically, uh, three, I'm sorry, three major predictions. The first one is that internet companies will be un under increasing pressure from governments and public worldwide in order to act as uh, responsible players, in order to, to uh, contribute more to the global public good. And this is, I would say, no-brainer. We have been following it throughout uh, this year. This is already happening. Facebook, Google, Twitter are under the pressure in the United States. Uh, you probably followed the hearing uh, in, the, in the US Congress on the question of fake news. and. Uh, misuse of those platforms for the elections. There is increasing pressure in the Brussels, which will even increase further with the introduction, uh, introduction of the general data protection rules. Therefore, economists argue that will be the major trend of 2018, not only in digital field, but in global politics. Second trend will be, will be attempt to contain China, according to the economists. There will be more and more attempts by European Union and other actors to force China to follow the uh, rules of the of the economic uh, economic game and third trend uh, is very interesting and it's related to our neighbors arguing that basically France and uh, Macron will create some sort of new social contract there because they're the best position to play for the uh, the question of the let's say social cost of the new technological development because of the French uh, social protection and the social system while also combined with the new dynamism with, uh, when it comes to digital economy which Macron is now trying to do. There were, those are three trends according to The Economist and I suggest that you consult them. Strong pressure against uh, internet companies to act more responsibly. Second, pressure on China. And third, uh, uh, Macron as uh, in a way uh, the, the developer or a sort of uh, player who will uh, create a new compromise, a new balance between technology and humanity, between technological developments and social responsibility. In this context, I would say we'll have also discussion on the DDoS and uh, Internet of Things and other specific issues. But my, my sort of guess and the crystal ball exercise is that we'll have the major, major restructuring on the, on the policy scene over the next two to three years along the different uh, lines of the coalitions and uh, uh, actors and, uh, and issues in the focus. Any other question? Good. Any other question, comment? Uh, yeah, Florin, do you agree with me? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there are two questions, you know, a little more practical um, about crystal balls um, exercise. How do you think that uh, net neutrality will affect uh, the business model that uh, we have now? Because I think the impact will be more in uh, small and medium uh, enterprise and uh, startup. Because if we develop this kind of approach, this uh, will have, uh, I think, a huge impact on these uh, startups, especially. And secondly, how you see? the Bitcoin evolution, and uh, why do you think this uh, 
it's so uh, sharply increase. It's something behind, uh, because uh, I think this is also connected with some ransoms or things like this. Uh, and I saw just now on internet uh, one Bitcoin, something like 9,000 uh, Swiss francs, more than that. Thank you, Florian, for this good reminder. In our discussion about trends, we wanted to include uh, Bitcoin because it's very tangible. It moved from 1,000 to 10,000 in a matter of, uh, well, 11 months. Because at the beginning of the year, the value of one Bitcoin was $1,000. The latest, I think, is 9,700. It will, it will cross 10,000 very soon. And it is one of, the, one of the big mysteries and one of the issues why internet governance and digital policy will move faster into the focus of general public than we thought. Definitely moving through the, our circle of usual suspects of internet, people going to the IGF and other players. It is becoming tangible, it affects economy, and it opens the issues like uh, of the origin of this, uh, of, um, uh, of these funds and possibility of using the Bitcoin and cyber uh, currency for the money laundering. Apparently, and I'm not specialist for the economies, but I try to, to see the answer why, it, uh, why we had this latest raise over the last few weeks of few thousand. Apparently, there is announcement of the hedge funds, which are controlling considerable part of the economy, that they will invest heavily in, uh, in, uh, in Bitcoin and the other uh, cryptocurrencies. Therefore, this is an important, important issue, and you can follow the local news. We are trying to follow the local news in different places in the United States, China, here in Switzerland, and you can see that uh, digital issues are becoming more and more prominent for two reasons. One is cybersecurity fear, and the second one is, is uh, financial, uh, financial importance with the growth of the Bitcoin. First question is extremely important, and I would say that we can, after the 14th of, uh, therefore two, two important dates are 14th of uh, December in the United States, end of net neutrality, and 28th of May, introduction of a general data protection regulation next year. These two developments will have a really imp uh, huge impact on the global digital policy. The first development, the question of, uh, of uh, net neutrality, as you indicated, is going to affect definitely uh, small and medium enterprises. In what way? The cost of doing uh, the entry point for entering the internet business will be much higher. Because, for example, one of the, let's say, outcomes of the end of net neutrality will be that uh, Facebook will make a deal with Swisscom to pay for the access to the, to the Swiss citizens, faster access to the Facebook resources or YouTube uh, or any, any, other, any, other, any, uh, any other resource. There will be possibility to have, I'm coming on this, uh, there will be possibility to make these special channels once you basically declare that internet packets and internet traffic doesn't have the same uh, status, there will be possibilities for different type of uh, bilateral arrangement, first in the United States, later on on the international level. This is, let's say, very, very dark and negative scenario, but not completely unlikely. And uh, initially, as you know, in the net neutrality debate, Facebook, Google, and internet industry are for net neutrality for a very simple reason, because the more users they have, the more data they can mine, and they don't want to have this filtering on VIP and other, other internets. The reason why net neutrality debate is reopened and why we'll have a new rules on the 14th of the December is the strong uh, uh, lobbying power, uh, especially with the Trump's administration of the telecom industry. Telecom industry basically wants the, uh, the higher share of the uh, income which is coming from the, from the internet. Now we can expect that uh, in Europe, Europe uh, European telecom industry has been very skeptical about net neutrality. And one of the arguments, let's say on very political economy basis, was that, hey, we are not gaining any income from the internet industry. Major beneficiaries are the internet companies in the United States. Why we don't have uh, different rules, uh, not according to net neutrality, in order to have more income to the internet uh, or to telecommunication companies in Europe. Now, what does it mean practically? Once net neutrality as a rule is challenged, 
you can have all sorts of uh, agreements. Is it going to affect the internet industry? It, it is not going to affect them uh, to the large extent. They are laying their own cables. They are strong enough that they can pay. They can pay Swisscom. I'm giving the example of the Swisscom for, and I can, I, I noticed that it raised the concern from, uh, from Christiana, but I'm trying to be a very, very clear in, uh, uh, speaking clear language when it comes to political, polit uh, uh, political and economic impact of the net neutrality rulings. Christiana, sorry for waiting. I, uh, thank you. Um, I was just a little bit um, perplexed by by your comment because, um, I mean, this is a ruling that applies to the U.S. and to U.S. companies. Um, Canada will certainly continue to abide by net neutrality. So if any of these companies want to operate in Canada, they will not be able to throttle their services. So as long as we or any other country in the world decides to maintain the net neutrality rule, I mean, of course, small businesses in the U.S. who want to try to get online and try and get their business online will have a challenge. But that doesn't mean that your country or my country have to follow that ruling in the U.S. And certainly for us, there is no question that you know net neutrality is, is going to be questioned because the, the government is 100% behind it and it would take a lot of lobbying by any company to be able to change that and to convince us of otherwise. So, so from our perspective, it's, it's an unfortunate decision if it happens, but it's not the end of the world. Thank you. Th that will be, there are a few interesting. Thank you, Jovan. Just uh, still on the net neutrality, I see there also another danger that could m maybe, maybe it's, it's not in the room, but if telecom companies like Swisscom or, or, or Sunrise, whatever, can decide who shall ha send the information at which speed, uh, you might get, then get to a second stage where governments might say, might say, if the telecom companies decide that, why should I, me as a government not decide that? So in a way, it would be kind of the justification for certain governments to put certain internet companies more under pressure in, 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 in maybe manipulating their data exchange compared to others. And I have the feeling that that's, it's, we are talking only about the telecom and the internet providers, but there might also, the governmental aspect might also come into that which would open again a, another black, uh, Pandora box. Great. Uh, well, Pandora box is, is uh, the, the, this is opening definitely a uh, Pandora box. What Christian indicated, net neutrality is regulated on national level, on, on the European Union by European Parliament. Therefore, uh, this is definitely true that Canada will, and its strong promoter of net neutrality, can say, okay, here we have a national border. Don't, ex uh, the, don't export your rulings, which are not according to net neutrality. Uh, across the across the your northern border, uh, it is it is going to happen. Uh, in the, the quite a few countries will uh, react in this way. I'm a bit skeptical because of the internet uh, business model. And you mentioned the cloud. You mentioned the question. It will really complicate internet business model and the way how countries will be able to impose their rulings on the net neutrality. It is going to be the major 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 challenge, and uh, it will definitely make internet completely different. What is my major concern is that enabling power of the internet can be challenged. Because if you can have a sm you cannot have small and medium companies accessing the internet for whatever reason. Maybe internet companies will pass the cost of their adjustment to national borders, like when they are crossing the Canadian borders, they will pass the cost to the, to the internet users. Therefore, that entry points to businesses and to the internet users will be definitely higher than it is today. When it comes to the cost, security is going to be one of the reasons why what, uh, what we are hearing is that uh, internet companies, uh, telecom companies in the United States won't focus only on the question of speed, but they will also introduce security as another element. On our special network, which we can provide, will provide higher security. We, you, want, you can be assured that you won't have a cyber attacks, you won't have ABC. Now, one can imagine, as, as uh, Salman indicated, how many new uh, Pandora boxes uh, will be opened. Uh, one important uh, aspect is that telecom companies are on much shorter, let's say, a leash when it comes to the government control than internet companies. Therefore, we can expect stronger pressure from governments and the European Parliament and other actors to follow some, uh, some, uh, some uh, sort of government policies. Directly or indirectly, Salman, that's definitely. But cloud, what uh, Florin mentioned, is going to be highly relevant and important. 
Well, Roxana? No. Good. Okay. Uh, thank you for, uh, please, one question. Announcement, yes. Okay. Time for another an announcement. <laughs> Just a little comment on the WTO ministerial conference. Uh, next to the to the work program and, and uh, the negotiating mandate, there's also the renewal of the e-commerce moratorium, uh, which has not still been settled uh, for now, and it which is historically linked to the trips agreement moratorium. And we all know, I mean, it's it's the general rule that these uh, decisions are made last minute, just before uh, each MC. Uh, but we all know the developments uh, since last year. <laughs> in all these issues, and you know, we might have more difficulties this time than uh, previous time. So, it's well for the moment, it's still not settled at least. So, we also keep in mind. Do we have, do we have, we have a, we'll report also on a very interesting event, event on jobs, which uh, which permanent mission Belgium organized with the with the ILO. Do we have any other announcement and comments about the development during the next month, please? Sorry to, to be so vocal. Uh, sometimes, not always. Um, um, in your main events list, I don't know if it was in the November one or if it should be in the December one, but this week, uh, I believe in Strasbourg, they're beginning negotiations on an additional protocol to the Budapest Convention, uh, which is there to uh, manage uh, cybercrime um, between states. Um, so so you know, those negotiations are starting. I'm not, I'm not sure if there's a deadline for them, but that would be oh, one event that we can uh, watch out for in the future. Thank you. And then, sorry. Just an announcement that the new commissioner for DG will be um, for uh, communication and digital Correct. economy will be in Geneva on uh, 18 and 19 of December being uh, part of uh, Internet Governance Forum. It's Bulgarian commissioner. Yes, the new one, Gabriel. Heard that she's quite open for new ideas and uh, and discussion and engagement. Therefore, that would be an interesting meeting. Well, uh, the events ahead of us: uh, World Internet Conference in Wuhan, and we'll have uh, Peter going to Wuhan. Therefore, Peter, you will report uh, what's happened uh, over there. And then we have uh, well, a start of the um, the new negotiation of addition protocol. Thank you, Christiane. We'll have a, a connecting Europe with the building blocks, making the digital single market a reality in Brussels. WTO ministerial meeting in uh, December. Uh, then uh, prior to the IGF, there will be Giga, uh, GigaNet annual symposium in Geneva. GigaNet is academic uh, research community. We'll have also on the 16th, very interesting event of civil society here at, uh, at Geneva Internet Platform. I don't know if it is open for the observers. I guess all of us are in a way civil society where different parts of civil society will meet and try to see what can be done during the IGF. As you know, there are two major uh, sort of groupings in civil society, one arguing that uh, civil society can rely more on governments in protection of the public interests in simplified format, and the other groupings are arguing that uh, pure multi-stakeholder model and participation of civil society on equal footing is, uh, is the way how to promote and protect uh, internet rights and the uh, position of civil society. There will be an int there is an interesting discussion initiated by uh, Richard, who we are missing Richard today, who basically argued that civil society may play the role as civil society played in uh, in the negotiation of landmines of cluster munition, where there was a blockage in intergovernmental process, and then civil society created a new new dynamism, and well, they got two Nobel prizes, one for the landmines, the latest one for the nuclear non-proliferation. Well, that will be an interesting event on the 16th uh, here at, uh, at uh, JP, and then we'll have an um, Internet Governance Forum between 18th and 21st uh, December. Well, 200 workshops. Uh, don't miss uh, our exhibition at Art at the IGF, which was, a st which was set in the, with the help of UNOG and the Internet Governance Forum. We'll have artists from uh, all over the world, digital artists, basically showing how do they see the question of digital policy through their artistic installations. It will be at the major venue at the IGF. And then VUSID on 20 December, VUSID's forum open consultation process, first physical meeting. I'm, we are really getting too close to Christmas. And don't worry, we'll, we won't have a briefing on what would be the briefing now on the 26th or 27th. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, Christiane. But we'll find some other way to, to close the year. 
Thank you very much for uh, for your attendance and uh, and a very interesting discussion. We are starting uh, at three o'clock with the next session, focusing on question of jurisdiction and access to justice. Those of you who are interested to follow this discussion, please join us. Stay for the for some refreshment, and we'll continue at three o'clock. Uh, I invite our online uh, uh, colleagues to follow the regional briefings, uh, briefings of regional hubs, together with Stephanie and Serena. All the best. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Evan, for the excellent roundup of the developments and the analysis of the top trends in November. That was a busy month indeed, and a very interesting one. Uh, Roxana, thank you also for moderating the vibrant online conversation and for sharing uh, our questions with uh, Jovan and the NC2 audience. For our online participants, we now have the regional update, so please stay, uh, please stay with us. In parallel, there is a discussion starting now specifically with our, for our colleagues from the Southeastern Europe, perhaps Arvin, we can post the link there. Uh, so back to the regional update. We first have uh, Jacob, Jacob from Ghana, who will share updates from Africa. So over to you, Jacob. Good afternoon from Ghana. My name is Jacob Adami Baden, and I'm here to give you a quick update of what happened in the digital space for the month of November in Africa. Now, the big one happened in Nigeria, where Facebook has launched a digital initiative uh, in that country. Now, first of all, Facebook aims to uh, go into strategic partnerships to deliver digital skill-based training uh, across the country, targeting uh, the youth and uh, providing them opportunities towards job creation. Facebook also is establishing a digital hub, uh, that's a tech hub in the country, and the objective of this is to support uh, tech entrepreneurs or tech startups to be able to acquire the needed support in order to be attractive for further investments in order to scale up. And then I bring you to Ghana where the broadband communication uh, chamber is launching the first ever broadband forum in this country. Now the objective of this forum is to revamp the old broadband strategy that came into force in 2012. Now uh, the broadband chamber believes that Ghana has got to accelerate efforts in the uh, broadband space in order to be able to attain and achieve the objectives in the sustainable development goals of the UN. And the current uh, broadband strategy seems not to support uh, a quick attainment of that objective. So this forum will uh, call for public inputs in order to strategize and come up with a new strategy uh, to accelerate broadband adoption in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, we now have Andre Edwards with uh, updates from the Caribbean region. And Andre will be covering developments on uh, cryptocurrency and ICO rules, as well as the regional LACNIC forum. So over to Andre. Andre Edwards with Caribbean. Andre Edwards with Caribbean. Government of Angola announces world's first blockchain token offering registration process. The government of Angola has announced its plan to enact the first cryptocurrency regulatory regime for registration of initial offerings of specified categories of cryptocurrency. This law, called the Angola Utility Token Offering Act or Auto Act is the world's first registration process for a cryptocurrency offering. The government of Angola believes there is opportunity to provide clear guidance on initial coin offerings for both issuers of these new cryptocurrencies and the purchasing public. The Auto Act will facilitate the registration of clearly defined utility tokens that do not have the features of a security and that have one or more utility features within the issuer's current a proposed blockchain platform. A sound balance is to be struck between meeting the information requirements of the purchasing public and creating an accelerated but prudent process to meet the needs of the fast-moving blockchain industry. Caribbean technology development advanced by Internet Week Guyana. The Guyana Ministry of Public Telecommunications 
hosted a meeting which was jointly organized by the Latin America and Caribbean Internet Addresses Registry, RACNI, the Caribbean Network Operators Group, CARMA, the Internet Society, ISOC, the I Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, ICANN, and the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, CTU. The week-long tech conference provided capacity building sessions focused on awareness of the internet landscape, internet governance issues, cybersecurity concerns facing the region, the operations of the regional internet registries, and ended with a youth ICT day designed to highlight the tangible dangers of unsafe online behavior. Google's parent alphabet and AT&T float internet balloons in Puerto Rico. Google's parent, Alphabet Inc., partnered with AT&T to advance the Project Loop initiative in Puerto Rico to deliver the internet to remote areas of Puerto Rico using high-altitude helium balloons where cell phone towers were knocked out by Hurricane Maria. The balloons are more than 60,000 feet above land and navigate using an algorithm that puts them in the best position to deliver signal by rising and falling to ride the currents. Alphabet is using machine learning powered algorithms to keep the balloons clustered over Puerto Rico. AT&T has deployed over 14 temporary cell sites and more than 60% of Puerto Rico and 90% of the US Virgin Islands have been reconnected. Thank you, thank you, Andre. Some very interesting updates from the from the region. We now have uh, Sita Lakshmi with updates from Asia, in particular from Pakistan. So over to you, Sita. Hi, this is Sita Lakshmi from Indonesia. I would like to update you for Asia region, in particular Pakistan. Last Saturday, November 25th, Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority or PEMRA blocked private television news channels. This decision was made hours after police forces launched a crackdown for sit-in protesters in Faiz in Abad, Islamabad. In their memo distributed to all news channels, PEMRA informed that under the Electronic Media Code of Conduct in 2015, the live coverage of any security prop operation is strictly prohibited. TV channels are advised to exhibit utmost sensitivity regarding the matter and refrain from live coverage. The blackout of private new television news channel then brought people to social media. It was not that long because the Pakistan Telecommunication Authority or PTA on the same day blocked all social media access such as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. It was temporarily restored in the afternoon but blocked again short after. The next day, on Sunday, both institutions restored its order opening access to private news channels and social media again in Pakistan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sita. So once again, thank you, Jacob, Andre, and Sita for sharing the updates from the region. Um, all the updates mentioned today by Jovan and by our colleagues are described in the observatory at dig.watch, where you can find um, additional resources and sources uh, for each of the updates. And that brings us to the end of our November briefing on IG, and actually it is the last briefing of the year. So thank you for participating in today's briefing, um, and the recording and the presentation and the digest will be available soon. Um, and perhaps one final announcement, we will have the, uh, the, the Geneva Digital Watch newsletter, it will be available for download this week um, on Thursday at digwatch forward slash newsletter. So thank you once again and see you very soon.